uh, for this fragment and you see all the things you would expect here. You see lots of cameras with animations. You see the, the frames. Uh, so those are the, the character frames that we uh, uh, that show up in this uh, in this fragment. Uh -huh. um, I mean, this is part also of the uh, um, the customization we were able to do because the uh, uh, the timeline code is uh, is available. So we could just add our own stuff to that. So we can actually see the share our thumbnails in the timeline. Uh -huh. So we have all the different characters. We have Jim there. Uh, Michelle, we got little Zeus here as well. Um, and let me just close this one. Then we have the audio. So here you see the different characters and you see their VO um, coming in. Um, other animations, uh, the visual effects, some in-game text. There's some text on the top that we actually, if I show the game window. So I, in this case, I haven't loaded the environment. So it will just, you see the characters against the blue background. Yeah. Uh, if I just load the environment, there you go. You actually see them in a proper place. So this here on the top, this Route six, uh, 66, Arizona, this is the in-game text. Um, and those are a couple of things that, uh, that we add on the timeline. There's a lot of stuff that uh, Maze team actually use. Uh, on the timelines. Um, so this is the, uh, the Cinemachine uh, workflow where the virtual camera controls uh, basically where the uh, the actual camera moves. So every episode has just one camera and the, okay. cinema the, the virtual cameras on the timeline just control where it goes all the time. Uh, and can I can have some other stuff view on top. As you scrub through it? So oh, yes. See it visually? Uh, I think the game view is best to see, oh, right? perfect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can see here, there's little Zeus. Jesse! Yeah. <laughs> this is Ron dog. So cute. Yeah, this is actually my dog. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, really? Playing this character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to bring him on stream. Uh, I'll, I'll bring her in in a second. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, when we come back from break. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so here we have the one camera, then you switch to the other camera. You can see that the, uh, the switch in the view aligns with yeah. this switch here, etc. And you go. Amazing. Etc. And in here you see, so these tracks are all just animations for the different cameras. And then we close that group. So then we have the frames, which I already mentioned, which is just all the character images. So right. if I click on them, I can see the original image here and loads of additional data, uh, the unique ID, um, some text. Uh, so this is Jim, he is smoking. Mm -hmm. It's medium distance, all that kind of stuff, uh, which helps us manage all the uh, all the shot frames. So that's the frame. and is that just so for locating the the frames essentially those tags? Uh, yeah, to to locate them, to also to organize the work, and also for uh, reuse potentially, right? If right. you need a, a an image of of of, of Jim uh, a medium distance smoking somewhere, then those tags help you find them in the as we said fifteen thousand frames we have you don't want to just search that by visuals right <laughs> absolutely and, and i love that you added the thumbnails there as like little thumbnails mm -hmm. to, to represent what the what the image is yeah that makes it a lot easier to uh, uh to find what's going on in the scene so th this these whole tracks basically are, are custom tracks that we uh, uh we added nice. specifically for this um Gonna have so to, show notes, that to, so the, these... to the timeline team yeah yeah <laughs> um these notes, uh, they're muted now, but those were notes added at the start as indications for the cinematics team or sometimes also for the user test. If something we can't put in yet, but we just do a text description of something that's going on here or some uh, descriptions uh, or um, helpful notes from the script for the cinematics team, uh, they can be, uh, can be added here so they know uh, more details about what to do. So audio we have. Uh, the VO is already mentioned. So these are just uh, triggers that have an uh, ID and they give you the English text and the link is just to the English VO uh, file. Um, but when we run the game, we uh, we automatically, uh, instead of the uh, the English version, we take whatever language you're playing in. I think we've got 11 Engli uh, languages in total for VO yeah. and more for subtitles. So this clip actually triggers the audio as well as a subtitle. Mm -hmm. uh, again, then we have Foley, uh, sound effects, atmospherics, the, the usual uh, uh, components of audio, uh, music in this case. Well, there, I'm not saying there's no music here, but there's no state changes. 
Right. Uh, so music doesn't have triggers to trigger a specific audio, but they, they change states and it's all done in wise by the audio team uh, to control the, 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 uh, the atmospheric. Or might it change depending on like a decision you make or something? The music yeah, yeah, could change. De- yeah, definitely. Oh, cool. It could. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then we have loads of animation. So there's a door opening here. There's the reception bell. Some wagons. Oh, oh the train. Uh, yeah, there's a train in the background. Let me see. If I <laughs> yeah, I think it's a this. wide shot. Yeah, oh, there yeah. in the distance, you see the uh, you see the the train going by. Hi. So that this is all the tracks of the uh, of the animation of that train. Nice. Um, oh, this was a, the door. Yeah, that's the door behind uh, behind Ash. Uh, so yeah, loads of animations going on here. Uh, on top of the animations that we do in the actual scene right here, yeah. we have something that we call uh, the environment animation system. And that is something you can apply on objects in the environment, like this door, for instance where you can say in the timeline here, what uh, state to change it to, like from open to closed, etc. cetera. Um, so that based on the decisions that you make, that it's still in the right state later on, because it's really hard to keep track of that. Um, so we built a test system on top of that, basically to, to allow consistency of states of, uh, of animated objects. Um, in game text, we already showed it a little bit, right? There was the- yeah. um, the, no, they, the, the location. There. Yeah. Exactly, the location here at the start. There we go. And we got some other uh, in-game text as well. There's a pager at some point where yeah. you can see the text uh, uh, coming in uh, on screen. And well, I won't give away all the other stuff that's there. Yeah. Some visual effects. This is some dust. So there must be some dust on screen somewhere. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. There you go. <laughs> there There's you some go. dust here. Right? Um, and some other... <laughs> A lot of layers, incredible. Yeah, lots of stuff. So the flashback capture, as, as I mentioned, so apparently over here, this little bit we capture as a flashback, so that's used later in the game. Yeah, hopefully in the last the episode six. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Huh? Yeah. Um, close caption. Close so caption. apparently there is something here which I don't know. What it is? But the TV, maybe. Yeah, this is the TV. Uh, the TV playing. Oh, I see. So this is just an, uh, uh, a subtitle uh, 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 clip, basically telling it to show that the TV audio is playing uh, for people with closed caption. Um, the Polaroid I mentioned. So we're capturing a Polaroid over here. Uh, oh, probably at the start, right? Yeah, of this uh, this image. So if we go to the story tree, you probably see this image somewhere. No, sorry, I, I just wanted to actually go back to this because this was the original question about the different levels of the... the uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, remember? Oh, I remember. Yeah, but first, I, I want to say, like, I, I've done a lot of these interviews and this is uh, the most extensive use of timeline I've ever, like, I've seen, honestly. It's really impressive to see essentially the whole game running on timeline and the way you've customized it to work for your specific workflow. It's... Uh, it's uh, fascinating. Yeah, it's what you get with a narrative game. Yeah, it's what you get, <laughs> exactly. <laughs>